attention, history lovers and the curious about the past. Welcome once again to another intriguing chapter of Time Tale Theater, known as The Spy Hidden in the Gestapo. The life of Willie Lehman was marked by a double life, one that placed him in the ranks of the powerful Nazi Gestapo, and another that made him a secret agent in the service of Stalin. Throughout this episode, we will unravel the threads of his life and his clandestine actions that operated in the shadows of World War II. In the shadows of history emerges the figure of Willie Lehman, a man who played an unexpected role in the machinery of the Nazi Gestapo. He became a secret agent for Stalin. For over a decade, this enigmatic individual operated as one of the leading Soviet infiltrators within the Third Reich state apparatus. It was a secret zealously guarded by Hitler's secret police, which took years to uncover the betrayal brewing within their ranks. When they finally did, Lehman had already transmitted highly sensitive information to Moscow. However, despite the uniqueness of his case, the story of Willy Lehman has remained in the shadows of the past, nearly forgotten since the end of World War II. This article unravels his intricate journey and the clandestine activities that defined him. Willy Lehman, whose full name was Wilhelm Lehman, was born in 1884 in Saxony, a region that was then an autonomous kingdom within the German Empire. His education was modest, and although he began basic studies, he soon left school to pursue carpentry. At the age of 17, he made a drastic turn in his life by joining the Imperial German Navy, where he would serve for over a decade before returning to civilian life. In 1911, Lehmann joined the Berlin police, a crucial moment in his career. Initially, he worked in Department 4, responsible for matters related to criminal police, and later, over time, he moved to Department 7, which dealt with political police. His professional career unfolded in the midst of a tumultuous period in German history, marked by World War I, the fall of the German Empire, the Spartacist Revolution, and the emergence of the Weimar Republic. These were years characterized by political upheaval, economic crisis, and deep social inequality. The new Weimar Republic faced internal challenges and the overwhelming economic burden inherited from the war. However, despite the issues of the time, the Roaring Twenties left their positive mark. Berlin, the capital of Germany, became a bastion of leftist politics but also a center of culture and social life during that decade. Berlin's nightlife became an emblem of the era, masterfully portrayed in literature and film, as demonstrated by movies like Cabaret or the series Babylon Berlin. During these turbulent and vibrant years, Lehman rose through the police hierarchy, establishing himself as an officer in the secret police section in Berlin. Willy Lehmann's collaboration with the NKVD began in 1929 when he was recruited by the Soviet agent Vasily Zarevin. To this day, the motives that led Lehmann to work for the Soviet secret services remain shrouded in mystery. However, it is presumed that economic reasons played a crucial role in his decision, as his extravagant lifestyle far exceeded his police salary. Furthermore, his passion for horse racing led to significant debts. Initially, the Soviets paid him 580 Reichsmarks per month for his services. Despite this, some sources suggest that Lehman may have had ideological motivations. Speculation abounds that, once Hitler came to power, Lehman may have expressed his discontent with the brutality of Nazi actions. Regardless of the motivations, he eventually became an invaluable source of information for the Soviet secret services. The NKVD, whose full name was the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs, was ready to capitalize on this relationship. As an NKVD agent, Lehman used various code names, with A201 and Breitenbach being the most notorious. He regularly supplied reports to his Soviet contacts at a time when Moscow had a growing need for information. In the early 1930s, the political and social situation in Germany was becoming increasingly complicated following the economic crisis of 1929. In this climate of systemic crisis, the Nazi party was gaining ground and heading for power. 
This materialized in January 1933 when Adolf Hitler was appointed chancellor. With the Nazis in power, the German state was gradually transformed under their dominion. Security forces became a primary target of this transformation. The Prussian secret police was reconfigured as the Gestapo and extended its jurisdiction throughout Germany. Lehmann joined the Gestapo in 1933 and a year later became a member of the SS and the Nazi party. His role within the Gestapo was impressive. He was appointed in charge of Soviet counterintelligence. With this position, the Soviet intelligence services had an agent at the heart of Hitler's secret police. Lehmann provided Moscow with highly relevant information, ranging from the structure of German intelligence to early rocket experiments. This became crucial as the Nazis were rearming, causing alarm among their neighbors. On one occasion, thanks to a warning from Breitenbach, the Soviet spy Arnold Deutsch avoided being arrested by the Nazi police. Lehmann also played a role in the Night of the Long Knives, the internal purge of SA leaders and other Nazi opponents. It is said that, at the request of Hermann Göring, he prepared lists of people to be eliminated. Additionally, he is credited with participating in some summary executions in late June 1934. These acts strengthened his reputation as an efficient and valuable agent within the security forces. During this time, Breitenbach provided detailed reports to Moscow about the dark purges of the SA. Throughout the 1930s, various German and Soviet agents of the NKVD acted as intermediaries for Willy Lehmann. Meetings usually took place in discrete locations in Berlin. His last contact, Boris Gordon, died in late 1938 due to a stomach ulcer. After this event, Breitenbach was left without contacts in the NKVD and the relationship between the two parties broke down. As a result, contacts between Lehman and the Soviets stopped in the following months. At the end of 1939, with the outbreak of World War II, German security services underwent significant reorganization. They were subordinated to the newly created Reich Main Security Office, led by SS General Reinhard Heydrich, whom Hitler would describe as a man of iron heart. By that time, Willy Lehmann had already advanced in his police career, reaching the ranks of criminal inspector and SS Hauptsturmführer. Under this new context of changes, Lehmann was assigned to Department 4 of the RSHA, which dealt with counterespionage in the German war industry. However, Lehmann's financial needs tightened once again. To alleviate his financial situation, in June 1940, Lehmann took a monumental risk by sending a letter to the Soviet embassy in Berlin, suggesting the reactivation of his collaboration. Despite the danger of the Nazi authorities discovering the letter, his move proved successful. He soon received an affirmative response from a Soviet agent, and contacts were resumed. This happened at a critical moment in the war, as Nazi leaders had their sights set on the Soviet Union. With Western Europe under German control, Hitler considered it the right time to invade the USSR and eradicate communism. Lehmann provided the Soviets with a confidential report he had drafted for Heinrich Himmler, which allowed the NKVD to know about the Gestapo's lack of information regarding Soviet spy networks in Germany. This was of great significance, as Soviet intelligence was trying to anticipate Hitler's next moves after the conquest of Western Europe, despite the existence of the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact. Tensions between Germany and the USSR were escalating. Lehmann also provided ample documentation about the German industry. On June 19, 1941, Breitenbach warned his Soviet contacts about the German plans to invade the USSR. According to his report, Germany would launch its attack at 3 a.m. on June 22. However, neither Lavrenti Beria, head of the NKVD, nor Stalin gave credence to these warnings. Finally, on June 22, Hitler's armies launched a massive offensive against the Soviet Union, marking the beginning of one of the greatest campaigns of World War II. This led to the departure of all Russian diplomats from Berlin, including the secret agents. Lehmann was once again isolated from Soviet intelligence. 
Over more than a decade, Lehmann had managed to keep his secret activities hidden from the German authorities. However, his world collapsed in 1942. That year, Nazi security dismantled the communist spy network known as the Red Orchestra, wrote Capel, resulting in the exposure and arrest of numerous Soviet agents. Lehmann was not linked to this network, but his former relationship with the Soviet secret services was discovered by chance. In November 1942, Lehmann was arrested by Gestapo agents and eventually confessed to his activities. He underwent intense interrogations by his former colleagues, although there is no record of what he revealed during those encounters. The surprise among the Reich's security authorities was immense. They found it difficult to believe that a high-ranking police official had been a Soviet agent for so many years. Meanwhile, the leaders of the secret police debated how to deal with this case. The head of the Gestapo opposed holding a public trial, which resulted in Lehmann's execution in the basements of the RSHA, according to some sources. Others suggest that the execution took place at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. The Nazi authorities attempted to cover up the matter. Lehmann's family was informed that he had died on the Eastern Front. The Internal Security Services Bulletin published an obituary on January 29, 1943, attributing his death to the Führer and the Fatherland. Willie Lehmann is one of the few cases in which Soviet intelligence managed to infiltrate an agent into the structure of the Nazi state. Although he did not hold a high rank, his privileged position made him an important asset for Moscow. His relative lack of notoriety contributed to his story being largely forgotten after his death, in contrast to other more famous cases. This situation has also been reflected in historiography, where his career has been treated on a smaller scale. In this intriguing journey through the life of Willy Lenin, the spy hidden in the Gestapo, we have shed light on one of the most intriguing enigmas of World War II. His story reminds us that, in the annals of history, often hidden are dark secrets and astonishing tales waiting to be unraveled. Just as we have explored Lehman's life, we have once again discovered the complexity of human nature and people's ability to navigate the turbulent waters of history. This story serves as a reminder of the importance of learning from our past and the decisions we make in times of crisis. We hope that this immersion in history has been a fascinating and enlightening experience for all of you. If you wish to continue exploring the mysteries and intrigues of other historical moments, we encourage you to stay connected with our channel and subscribe so you won't miss future episodes. We sincerely appreciate your company on this journey and remind you that, through understanding and reflection, we can forge a future in which humanity chooses the path of truth and wisdom over darkness and secrecy.